Proverbs 4, verse 5, and let's read this together. The Bible says, Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Anybody having a clue as to what word might have popped out there? Get, get and getting. And uh, again, just to ponder that thought about get and getting. We, uh, anybody ever go out shopping? <laughs> yeah, anybody like going shopping? Uh, sometimes, I, sometimes I do actually do like shopping. I, I'm finding the older I get, I like, I like sales, I like finding bargains. Um, I just I go to first place to go to well, one of the first places I go to when we go to Sam's Clubs to go back corner right where they got the, the dent and damage stuff I actually kick boxes to, no I'm just kidding um, <laughs> but I go back there to see if there's any good deals back there I'll, I want to go to Walmart I went in there Bobby and I went in to pick up some salt so we have some salt for this week and and uh, they had clearance tables set up and so I'm scouring that finding some pretty cool deals I uh, you know pick up those things uh, looking for deals get and and shopping and things like that I like uh, there's some websites I happen to like I'm forbidden to be on one but I'm on it anyway, and that's eBay. I, 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 y y Joe, I'm just there. I mean, you know, something, oh, I'd like to have one of those. Hit it on eBay and see if there's anything good, any good deals come up. And uh, there's another one that, uh, and this is probably going to be on tape, but that's okay, but uh, there's a, a site called Arms List, and there's people selling guns on there, amen, trying to find good deals. I like getting things. And, and so as I was thinking about that, how we acquire things and grocery shopping and clothes shopping and, and shopping for whatever, as we go about our day-to-day, -day, I like going to Staples. Uh, there's neat stuff in Staples. I like pens and pencils and stuff like that. And they've got a little clearance rack up in the front. And I usually find some pretty cool stuff up there. So getting. I mean, everywhere I'm going, it seems like there's something to get. And uh, when, when, when these words hit me, God says, in all you're getting, you need to be getting something more than just things. We're very good at acquiring things. I mean, uh, ladies, if you know you need to put a meal together, you know you're going to put a certain meal together, you check your cupboards and your, uh, your, your pantry and your, and, and your uh, refrigerator to see if you've got all the ingredients. If you don't have that, you know, I need to go get that because I don't have that. And so you have a mission to go out and get that ingredient for that meal. And that's getting or uh, an article of clothing or a, a supply in the home that's lacking. Uh, you go out and get that. You start on a mission to get that. But the Bible saying here, with all you're getting, get something. Get, get something more than just the substance of this life. Uh, get something more than just the things uh, uh, that, 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 that maybe even be necessary for living. There's something that's vital spiritually that we need to get in our getting. As we're out procuring things and purchasing things, there's, there's some valuable things we ought to be getting as well. And so we're going to take a look at that in just a moment. And I'm going to just put that in the context of, of Proverbs here because it's a neat discourse between a, a father and a son between Solomon and, and, and Rehoboam, uh, that he wants to pass down to him. And so we'll pray, and then we'll jump into the second part of the message. Father in heaven, thank you for tonight. We love you. I want to thank you for the choir special tonight. When we see Jesus, what a day that will be. I, uh, they, they put it into, into words so well that the song did for us tonight. And Lord, I hope there's a longing in our heart to see the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and Lord, to allow our imaginations to, to, to be fired by that song, that uh, that is going to be a phenomenal moment when we see Jesus Christ for the first time. Uh, we, we, I know it hasn't even entered into our hearts or even our minds, uh, the things that you've got prepared for those that love you. But Lord, I cannot wait to see my Savior first of all. And Lord, what a wonderful song that was for us. Uh, the congregational singing tonight. And Lord, uh, come thou fount. And Lord, how that reminds us that we're prone to wander. But Lord, you love us anyway. And, and we thank you, Lord, for the special the lady sang that uh, no, no, no merit on our own. But because you loved us, you ransomed us with your death on the cross. And we thank you for going that way for us. And we thank you tonight for the fellowship of the saints. We thank you, Lord, for this place to meet in. We are mindful of those that are hurting tonight and, 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 and physically uh, afflicted tonight. And pray that you'd be with those, those that are recovering, those that are uh, in need of recovery and healing. We just pray that you'd put your hand upon them and, and raise them back up to full health. Jesus, we look to you as a great physician and know you can do uh, above and beyond all that we could even think or ask. And so, Lord, we just commit them to your care and, and trust uh, for their soon return among our congregation. Now, Lord, tonight I pray that you speak to each heart from the youngest to the most senior in here tonight. I pray that, Lord, you'd have something for each of us to take away from this message. We love you. We thank you for the word of God. Please be exalted in our midst, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. I want to take you first of all tonight as we take a look at this passage of Scripture. We'll come back to verses 5, 6, and 7 in just a minute and see what we're supposed to be getting. But I first want to draw your attention to the, uh, the, the verses uh, uh, that start 
uh, th this passage out, and that is verses 1 through 4. I call those the prelude. It kind of sets everything in order so we get an, understand, get an idea of why these words are being given, why these instructions, why these words are being put forth to us. So the, the prelude tonight is found in verses uh, 1 through 4. And the Bible says in verse number 1, Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, uh, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Uh, this, this prelude here is, is a message from a father to his children, uh, more specifically from Solomon, as I said, to Rehoboam, but to all of his children. But uh, uh, we look at this as, as mostly to Rehoboam. And, and so he gives these words and says a, a few things. He says, first of all, I want you to hear. That word hear there means to listen with the intent to follow instructions. There are some times when I'm teaching uh, or preaching. I know people are out there. I know they're looking at me, but I know nothing's going. You know, it's just there. They, they might uh, allow the words to enter into the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, that little thing on the side of each head, you know, on either side of the head. And it goes in this one. It seems like it just goes right out that one. Uh, that, that might be, they might be uh, uh, looking like they're hearing, but the hearing the Bible's talking about here is, is a listening with the intent to follow. When we, we think about that, when God wants, wants our attention, He just doesn't want us to just hear the words. He wants us to meditate on those words with the intent to follow those words. And so that's instruction. I know, uh, working in business, I would give uh, uh, folks that, uh, that we work with uh, as a supervisor, as a manager, I would give uh, uh, folks that I work with uh, uh, some instructions. I didn't want them just uh, uh, understanding I was talking in English, but I wanted those, I wanted those words followed. I wanted those instructions carried out. And so this is uh, uh, the mindset uh, behind the word hear. Uh, he wants uh, his children, uh, and especially Rehoboam, to hear or to listen with the intent to follow instructions. Also in the prelude, we not only see the, uh, the desire uh, to, to be heard, uh, but also uh, that those that are hearing would hold on to what's being given. Uh, we, 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 we have uh, uh, an incredible opportunity every time the Word of God is open, whether it's open in our own personal study and, 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 and devotions, or whether it's in a, a public setting like a, uh, like a Bible study or a Sunday school class or a preaching service. We've got an incredible responsibility to, to, to take care of what we hear. We are not only charged to hear it, uh, Jesus Christ, how many times did he say, for him that hath ears to hear, in Revelation, uh, for him that hath ears to hear, uh, again, uh, hearing with the intent to follow, that, that, that was a desire, but not only just to hear, but to, but to do it. The Bible says in the book of James uh, uh, that, 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 that uh, it's not just the one that hears, but it's the, the doing that brings a blessing, right? Faith without works is dead, and so the doing is what brings the life to what we've heard. And so uh, Solomon giving these words, I want you to hear what I'm saying. I want you to hear with the intent to follow the instructions I'm going to give you, but I also want you to hold on to those. What does he mean by that? Well, he says uh, in, in uh, verse number two, uh, for I give you good doctrine, uh, forsake ye not my law. Don't throw it away. Don't reject it. Don't refuse uh, this good doctrine that I'm giving you. And young people, let me just say this, when mom and dad give you instructions and, and instructions from their own experience, you would do well to listen to that and follow that. They've made mistakes, and we've made, I'll put they, we've made mistakes that we love you too much to allow you to lightly commit. You don't have to make the same mistakes. We've, you don't have to get involved in the same sins or, or follow the same paths that we followed and, and endure the same scarring that, that we have endured. God put us in your life to give you that instruction to warn you away from that. And let me just say this, young person, uh, there's no, there are no exceptions to the rules. If you do the same things we did, you will get the same scars and hurts and heartaches and wounds we've gotten. And we love you too much. Don't do that. Amen? Let me just give you one real quick. Don't put your tongue on cold steel. It will stick. I learned that lesson twice. I didn't learn it the first time, so I had to repeat it. Amen? And that's the danger of stupidity. You've got to learn the lesson twice. Amen? So let me just say this. Don't stick your tongue to cold metal because it will stick there. And the only way to get it off there, if you if get a little frantic, amen, is to pull it away and you'll leave some skin. That's not good. I say, Pastor Ross, what's this have to do with things spiritual? It's just an example. But think about that. When mom and dad give, say, I, I, I wish you wouldn't do that, or I think you need to watch your time being spent here, it, it's, why? it's because there's some experience that we've gained in living, some experience you don't have right now. And so this is the mindset of, of King Solomon giving these instructions. He said, I've got good doctrine. I've studied this out. I've got the, the wisdom and the knowledge uh, that, that, that you need. Please don't follow my example, but follow the wisdom that I'd like to give you. 
I'd like to be an example to my children, uh, a good example of what to do. But, but unfortunately, my pastor has some things that I, uh, I, I'm disappointed with, embarrassed by, and that I don't want them to follow. And Solomon is giving this out. He says, don't throw that away. Hold on to what I'm going to give you. Hold on to this good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. And then he goes and gives a little personal testimony. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Uh, the Bible says in verse number four, he taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. He wasn't even talking about the words of God. He's saying, <coughs> take the counsel that I've given you and retain those. Hold on to what I'm going to give you as a father to a son. He said, keep my commandments and live. My commandments and live. He wasn't even talking about the word of God. He said, but take the wisdom that I'm going to give you. Take the instruction that I'm going to give you as a dad to a child and hold on to that. Don't throw that away. I've studied this out. And let me just say this again. I know I'm talking to the young people right now. But let me just say this. Uh, uh, young man, young lady, uh, nobody's going to love you like mom and dad. No friend is going to love you with the love that a mother or a father has for you. Amen. And so when you get into conflict between the counsel that mom and dad give you and maybe a friend at school or a friend uh, uh, on, on a ball team or, or a friend uh, out, uh, uh, out and about and they conflict with the advice that mom and dad gives you, you best learn to run to mom and dad's advice and hold on to that and retain that and not let that go. Don't refuse that. Don't, don't forsake that. You hold on to the good counsel mom and dad have given you. Oh, if only I would have listened to mom and dad, I could have avoided a lot of heartache in my own life. And let me just say this. When you get hurt, guess what? It's not just you getting hurt. It's mom and dad that get hurt too. And there's a lot of amens from the parents. So I hope there's a lot of amens in the hearts of the children. Say, you know what? I'm going to listen to my pastor because I know he loves me. And I'm going to listen to my mom and dad because I know God loves me. enough to put him in my life. We okay on that one? Amen. So what do we have here? The prelude, we have the here. Listen with the intent to follow instructions. Hold on. Don't reject or refuse the good truth invested in you. And we see that in verses 2, 3, and 4. And before we get into our, our text tonight, I don't want to talk about the prelude, but there's a promise to this action of getting the right things. Look with me at the promise is giving, given when we get the right things. Verse number 8. Exalt her. And she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings. And the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. When, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. What do we see here? Some, some incredible promises. We'll get the things that are being offered by the word of God tonight. Now, I'm going to come back to those, but I want to show you the importance of getting the right things or getting the things that God says to go after. With all thy getting, get these things. We'll take a look at those two things in just a moment. But consider, first of all, the promises when we get those right things. We have the promises, uh, the promise of promotion. Look at verse number um, uh, 8 again. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. That word promote there means to rise or to raise, to bring up or to exalt. My Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. And, and what, what that means, and, and just to give you an understanding of that, when somebody goes after sin, their life is, is never what it could be. Because they've shortchanged God, they've, they've exchanged the blessings of God for the temporary satisfaction of following the flesh. And every time we decide to go after sin, we are forsaking a blessing of God that could bring us to promotion. Let me just say this, uh, if, if we will humble ourselves in the sight of God, He will lift us up. And, and when He lifts us up, guess what? Nobody can set us down. So when we get the things that God's Word is telling us to go after tonight, and we'll look at those in a second, we, we are promised promotion that God will raise us up. If we'll go after those things, God will lift us up. That doesn't mean we're going to be popular or have our faces on billboards or things like that. But, but in God's esteem, in God's estimation, we will be something. Amen? And let me just say this. I, hang the applause of men. Hang the popularity that so many go after today. Why? Because that's fleeting. How, how long is popularity in our culture? It, it, it's here today and gone tomorrow. The singers are popular last year, uh, aren't even on the charts this year. And I, I know I'm, I'm talking about worldly things, but right now uh, the, the, the movie stars that were popular a couple years ago are gone and forgotten. They're, 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 they're old news, and they're, everybody's looking for the new thing. I mean, that, that's the way of the world, uh, looking for them. And, and when you get them, exalt them, and then throw them out like yesterday's trash. I mean, if you want to live for that, then, then expect to be thrown out in the trash heap uh, in very short order. But I'll tell you what, I don't want to live my life that way. I want to live so that, that, that when God promotes me, and I want, to, I want to shine like the brightness of the stars in the firmament forever, according to Daniel chapter 3. Being a big name down here doesn't carry a lot of weight in eternity. 
And so uh, promotion is, is one of the promises given to those that get the right things. Not only promotion, but look at verse number 9. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver uh, to thee. There's prominence there. She shall bring thee to honor. Amen. When we get the right things, uh, there's honor in that. There is a, a, a blessing in that. There's a, a contentment in that. There's a, 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 a dignity in that. There's a, a good characteristic in that. So we see prominence there. She shall bring thee to honor. We not only see a promotion and prominence, but look at verse number 10. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. There's a prolonging or a productivity in one's days. How is it that some people seem to get a lot more done in their days than other people do? They've gotten a hold of the right things and their days can become more productive because they've gotten a hold of the two things that God says, I want you to get with all you're getting. And God says, when you get those things, your days can be more productive. Uh, you say, you know, talking about long life, we're going to live to 100. I'm not saying that necessarily, but I'm just saying the days we have will be full because they're purposed. Think about that. Time, time is precious. There, I heard, I saw it this week. Time is precious, therefore waste it wisely. Hmm. When we have these two things that we're supposed to go after, that our text tells us we're supposed to go after tonight, guess what? Longer days, product, productivity, uh, days of productivity, days of prolonging, according to verse number 10. But not only the prolonging of the productivities in the days were given, but also protection on life's pathways. Look at verse 11. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. So there's a, a protection promised on life's pathway. That word straightened in verse number um, uh, 12 uh, means to be distressed, to be narrow, or to be in straits or dire straits, to be vexed. If we get a hold of wisdom and understanding like the Bible is telling us, God says he will spare us or we'll be able to be spared from a certain amount of vexation, a certain amount of uh, uh, distress that we would find ourselves in had we not had these two companions to join us. Uh, so there's protection on life's pathway. The straightened, being distressed or being in a narrow place or a tight place uh, uh, to be vexed. Uh, also, he talks about stumbling. When thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Stumbling, that word there, stumbling, means to falter, to stumble or to faint or to fall. In our Sunday school class this morning, we talked about uh, not being weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Uh, that word faint there uh, in, in, in the New Testament means to let up a little bit, to relax. Uh, but, but here, uh, the idea of, of, of stumbling or tripping or not being able to run as efficiently uh, a, a, as we could. When we get a hold of these two things that God's Word tells us to get a hold of, He says, you know what? I'll keep you from, being, uh, uh, from finding yourself in dire straits or in a narrow place or to being vexed uh, and troubled. I'll also keep you from stumbling uh, or fainting or falling out of the way. And then lastly, we see in verse number 13, uh, part of the promise that, that is given to those that get the right thing. He says, uh, uh, the Bible says to us, Take fast hold of instruction, let her not go, keep her, for she is thy life. That, that last phrase there ought to burn in our hearts. For she is thy life. We need these things. Why? Because that's the priority. If we have these things, we understand a little bit about what's important about life. life the important things in life are not possessions. Not things. It's not popularity. But it's about having what God desires us to have and has designed us to lay hold on. He said, Pastor Ross, you've done a lot of alluding to it. We've, we've read the scriptures. We know what they are. Well, let's get to it right now then. Amen. We've seen the, the prelude to it. We understand about why these words were given. We see the promises that, that come when somebody uh, uh, goes after these things. Let us take now a look for just a few moments at the purchase. Verse number five, once again, if you'll go there. Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. It's interesting that wisdom and, and um, understanding are being personified as a woman. And, and if you'll read Proverbs, and again, every time I read through there, they're all, wisdom and foolishness and sinfulness are personified as women calling out to us in, in the first several chapters of Proverbs. And they're all trying to get our attention. 
and the foolish woman clamoring and, and inviting folks to come after her, but her pathways lead to death and hell, and, and, and the sinful woman encouraging uh, the, young, uh, the young man void of understanding to come into his house and leading him astray from the, the commandments of his parents and, and how, his, uh, how uh, he uh, runs through his own soul with death. Uh, we see that in the early chapters. And now we, we see somebody else, though, on the other side uh, clamoring for our attention or calling for our attention, and it's wisdom and understanding calling for us. You've got to decide who you're going to listen to and who you're going to follow after. And so what Solomon has done in putting the Proverbs together through the uh, wisdom and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he, he personifies wisdom and foolishness and sinfulness as, as, as uh, 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 folks calling to us, as ladies calling to us, and we've got to decide whose voice we're going to listen to. And in this case now, we see, uh, uh, again, her being personified. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. There's that priority again. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So what are we supposed to, to get? That word get and getting uh, in verses 5 and 7 mean to attain, to buy, to acquire, to purchase, or to possess. That is our job. That is what we're supposed to be going after. If you remember in our country, uh, the 49ers, anybody know the term the 49ers? What were they going after in, Fort, in 1849? Going after gold, and people lost their minds. I mean, they would sell their homesteads and, and pack up wagons and just head west, didn't know where they were going. They just knew there was gold out there, and it became a, a frenzy, and, and, and people just rushed west because they heard there's gold out there. There's gold in them, there hills, amen? And they'd rush after that, and, and, and many people came to ruin because they foolishly went after something they'd never seen. Sorry for the Western accent. It was very bad. Um, I am aware of my limitations. I am not a, a characterist. Uh, but they, they ran out there, and, 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 and a lot of people lost everything on that because they got so wound up in going after something uh, that, had, that had gotten their attention and had, had fired their imagination. Well, uh, uh, we are, are supposed to go after something that, that's attainable. This is not the gold hidden in some mine that uh, we may or may not find. This is gold hidden in a mine shaft that's open to us all. We can all, there ought to be a charge from the people of God going after wisdom and going after understanding because we can all lay hold on it. And we don't have to have a claim. Our claim's already been settled, right? We already have a claim to this book. Is that right? Amen. And so this book is full of wisdom. It's full of understanding. And we can all go after it and, 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 and come away rich because that was a desire of the people in 1849 to go after that so they could come away rich. Well, guess what, child of God? You have a gold mine in front of you, and that gold mine and the, and the things in that mine shaft are wisdom and understanding. And so we're supposed to get, lay hold, and possess these things. Now, what is wisdom? If we're going to go after it, what are we supposed to be going after? Well, wisdom, let me give you a few dif uh, dictionary, defi dictionary definitions. Amen? Wisdom is the right use or ex exercise of knowledge. Wisdom is the exercise of sound judgment, either in avoiding evils or attempting good. So first of all, we see wisdom is the right use or exercise of knowledge. It's how to apply what we know. Okay? Um, I, I look at wisdom um, and understanding. Understanding is comprehending or learning or being informed. Uh, understanding to me is um, at looking at, uh, well, let's say, looking at the game of baseball and being a batter. Kyle will appreciate this one. Understanding is knowing that when that ball comes across the plate, I've got to put my bat on it and put it in play. That's understanding. Wisdom is knowing what pitch to swing at to hit. Does that make sense? They, they go hand in hand, but they're two different things. Understanding uh, means I've got, an, uh, I've got a comprehension of it. I, I've learned some things. I'm informed of some things. I have a knowledge or a, a comprehension of some things. And that wisdom is putting it into practice. So I'm supposed to go after both wisdom and understanding. Wisdom takes that knowledge that I've got and helps me to correctly apply it, either in avoiding bad or in going after good. I, I don't mean to be unkind tonight. Let me just say this. I'm reading a book right now that's phenomenal, and I'll probably, probably bring some teaching on the subject here in a little bit. I, I hear it an awful lot, and, and really, I'm not trying to be ignorant. I'm not trying to be unkind. Uh, I, I don't have anybody in mind when I'm saying this, but I hear a whole lot of Christians going around and saying, judge not, judge not, judge not. That is the dumbest statement I've ever heard. We're supposed to judge righteous judgment. Now, the Bible is very clear, and Jesus Christ is very clear. We're not supposed to judge like the Pharisees do, but we're supposed to judge a righteous judgment. What is, what, is, what is wisdom then? It is looking at things as they are and saying, that's a good example. I'm going to go, follow that one. That's a bad example. What is that? That's judgment. Uh, I gave you an example. Amen? Sticking your tongue to a pole in the cold weather. You can look at that and judge, and that's okay to judge. I'm not going to do that because that hurts. Amen? 
There are all sorts of examples out there that we are required to judge, exercise discernment or wisdom. It's taking what we know and applying it correctly. So I'm supposed to go after wisdom. What I know, how to apply that. I, I know it's right to please. I want to please God. It's good to please God. There are blessings there. There's favor there. Uh, there there's contentment there. There's peace there. there. There's security when I'm pleasing God. Guess what? Wisdom is saying, you know what? I know what's right to do. I'm going to go ahead and do it now. I know that when I sin, it displeases God. I want to avoid those things that displease God. I'm going to use wisdom to help me to avoid temptation, which leads to sin. So we have wisdom is the application, understanding is the information. So what am I supposed to go after? Wisdom, I want to have wisdom, but I can't have wisdom without understanding. I've got to have something to apply. I can't go to the batter's box without a bat. I'm never going to hit the ball. We okay on that? So I'm supposed to go after two things, wisdom, which is a right use or exercise of knowledge, and then understanding is that knowledge. It is that comprehension. And so I need both. Where do I get understanding? Well, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. It's also the beginning of knowledge. True? So I've got to learn who God is. I've got to learn who God is well enough to understand. He ought to be respected, revered, followed, obeyed, served, praised, worshipped, sought after, loved. Amen. And when I start doing those things, it's going to bring me an understanding of who he is, a comprehension of who he is in a tangible sense. And then I take what I know about God and then I go after wisdom so I can apply what I know about God so I can please him and serve him and love him and all the other things that God has for me. Does that make sense? Amen. And all you're getting, what am I supposed to be getting tonight? But don't forget to get bread on the way home. Don't forget to get milk. Amen. It's going to snow, so we need to get toilet paper too. Amen. Uh, and people rush and they'll, they'll flood the stores and, 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 and just strip it bare, right? Hey, but while they're getting those things, and I'm not saying we shouldn't get those things, child of God, let, let's, come to the, let's come to the superstore of wisdom and knowledge and let's, let's walk out with our carts full. And guess what? It doesn't cost any money. You can take as much as you want. And guess what? When tomorrow rolls around, you can come back and get another buggy full. Amen? You can back up a semi and get as much as you can cram into your head and into your heart every day. With all you're getting, when you're going after things in this life, guess what? Let's go after knowledge. This Bible is full of who God is. And we're not going to know Him entirely. He can't be known entirely. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We understand that. But I'll tell you what, He has given us so much in this book that we can spend a, a, a thousand, a million lifetimes and never get, to know, never get to plumb the depths of this book entirely. So guess what? There's no shortage of information. There's no shortage of, uh, of understanding that can, be a, that can be acquired by us. So with all that getting, get understanding. With all that, get, uh, with all that getting, get wisdom. When you, when you get some understanding, learn how to apply that. That's part of my job as a, as, a, as a pastor, taking a look at passages of Scripture like this and saying, okay, here's what the Word of God says. Now, here's also how to apply it, making it practical. It's giving the understanding, but it's also giving the wisdom with the understanding so we can walk out here saying, I can do that. This morning we talked about uh, some things that ought to accompany us this year, right? The passion and, and, and the empowering up and all those things. Uh, well, the, word, the Word of God says this. That's the understanding. The wisdom is, let's go and put it into practice. Amen? And that's, that, that's the key. That's the key to successful living. That's the key to living a life that pleases God. Getting the right things. If we're not careful, we'll spend our life getting things that are of no value. We'll spend our life going after knowledge that will help us to win a game of trivial pursuit but won't get us anywhere in our pursuit of Almighty God. Hey, while you're out getting, don't forget that you're on a spiritual quest as well. Get wisdom, get understanding.